is by Robert Ballard, are all from a uh, book that he published in 1611, uh, just when he was uh, coming into the peak of his career as the uh, favored lutenist of the uh, French court, uh, the court of Marie de Médici. Um, and uh, his music represents uh, everything that was most fashionable, most up to date uh, at the time at, at the French court. Uh, and in particular in that it uh, features a dance called the Courant, which uh, during the past previous 10 years had become the, the favorite dance uh, of the uh, French upper classes, a uh, position that it retained for the whole rest of the century, in fact. Um, and well, the dance is in uh, a medium triple meter with a, a lot of flexibility, um, a lot of flexibility in the rhythm, uh, could have changes in mood, changes in texture. Uh, so it's an ideal vehicle for musical elaborations, uh, which is how you know, Vadach has done. Uh, the way the book is organized, it's uh, in sections according to the different kinds of pieces that he has. So it uh, begins with a set of, um, I think, 10 uh, pieces called Entrée de Lutte, uh, which are like freely composed pieces, like preludes, or you know, what Italians would have called toccatas. Uh, and then a section of pieces that are uh, arrangements of songs drawn from Ballet de Cour, which were a, a, uh, a court, well, courtly entertainment, usually on a large scale, you know, theatrical, uh, with dancing, obviously, and singing. Uh, then uh, that's followed by the Courant, which uh, takes up over, over half the volume, there are 28 Courant. Um, and then the book ends with a set of uh, volts, Volts, which are an, another dance, uh, musically, musically sim somewhat similar to the Coulant, but uh, uh, the more sprightly character, I guess. You know. And uh, so the intention is that the uh, player is uh, you know, select pieces from the different sections, and assemble little suites, you know, just pretty much any way, uh, any way like. Uh, that's one of the things that I really enjoy about this repertoire is that uh, I get to make up my own little suites. Um, so this, uh, well, this next suite uh, begins with one of the Entrée de Lutte and then the Courant, um, and then a sequence from uh, one of the Ballet de Cour, the Ballet de la Reine, uh, a ballet evidently for um, a birthday or something for the Queen, and um, and then end with another coulant. Thank you. 
Thank you.
I'm always intrigued by how different uh, the music of Italy is during this period, actually during the whole 17th century, uh, how different it is from the French style. It seems, you know, completely different conception of, of music altogether. Uh, so I, at the last minute, I thought it would be uh, fun to slip a few Italian pieces into this uh, otherwise francophone program. Uh, Alessandro Piccinini was a close contemporary of uh, Javier Badas. Uh, he worked in Bologna and, and Rome, uh, one of the most famous Italian movements of the time. Uh, in, uh, well, in, in contrast with the uh, elegance and poise and straightforward melodies, dance, dancey rhythms uh, favored by the French, uh, Italian, uh, Italian music favors um, uh, dramatic gestures, uh, convoluted melodies, uh, uh, you know, virtuosic, uh, show-off virtu virtuosity, things like that, which uh, things that were all much appreciated by the French, but uh, I guess conservative French critics would consider these things uh, a little over the top. Uh, well, so here's a, uh, a Toccata by um, Piccinini, which you can compare with the, uh, the Entrée de Lutte of Pada, and then a uh, Corrente, uh, which is the French version of the Courant, uh, a very different character. <laughs> Thank you. 
Vincenzo Galilei. Uh, his older brother was the uh, well-known astronomer and uh, scientist, uh, Mich uh, Galileo Galilei. And uh, Michelangelo had quite a substantial career uh, as a lutenist himself. But uh, unlike uh, the other uh, leading uh, Italian lutenists of uh, this time, uh, Piccinini or, and uh, Girolamo Kapsberger, uh, his music shows really a very heavy uh, French influence. Uh, and this is probably because he spent uh, most of his career outside of Italy. Uh, his first job was uh, at the court of Poland, where he uh, stayed for 13 years, and then uh, after that he was at the court of Munich. In, uh, in both places, his, uh, well, in both places, French music was very much in vogue, and there were many French uh, musicians. Uh, and, uh, well, he, he was maybe uh, expected by his employers to, uh, uh, to compose music with French, uh, in the French style. And, uh, especially, you know, in his dances. Uh, it's, well, his music still retains uh, some Italian character. Uh, you could consider it maybe a, a precursor of the Goût Réuni of, uh, of uh, François Couplin about 100 years later. Uh, but, well, and another um, feature of, uh, of uh, Galilei's music in the book that he published in 1620, the pieces are arranged in uh, prescribed suites. So unlike uh, in Palas book where the, uh, you know, the player gets to choose the order of pieces, make little sets, you know, any way they like, uh, Galilei really has the, the, uh, his uh, suites, actually he calls them sonatas, has them arranged in, in you know, very precise order. Uh, and in fact, there are shared uh, harmonic sequences and melodic motives among the various movements. Uh, so he was one of the first composers to do that. Um, so this is uh, his sonata in A minor, that begins with the toccata, uh, and then uh, two correntes, and ends with the volta. Thank you. 
Thank you. 
Thank you.